All right, we're beginning, we're ready to begin our next session here, talking about fiat money. We worked our way through commodity money, representative money, we're down to fiat money. Now we're going to talk about the two different kinds of fiat money. We're going to talk about low-powered fiat money and high-powered fiat money. Those are my terms. It is in the literature somewhere, but it's not in your particular textbook. But that's how I would describe these two different categories of fiat money. And I'm going to talk about this process here by telling you two stories. This story, the Goldsmith story, is in your text. It's in virtually every macroeconomics test text. It's a little apocryphal, I'm sure, but it's pr it probably happened, and it, 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 it explains the situation pretty well. And so we're going to continue that. If it is a myth, it's a very useful myth, and we're going to continue that because of its uh, illustrative teaching power. And I suspect that it's very true to boot. I just don't have any documentation of that. And then we're going to take that story and upgrade it to the first bank of Dodge City. And then we're going to talk about these, the technical details of these two kinds of fiat money. So in your text, there is the story of the goldsmith. The goldsmith. Now, in the Middle Ages, the most commonly traded commodity, monetary commodity, was gold. Um, other things were traded too. But gold was very precious. And there were silversmiths and blacksmiths and goldsmiths. People worked with gold. And the goldsmith um, would have uh, some sort of house here. And um, on the back side of his house, here would be the front side over here, like here. So I can't draw, but something like this. Um, on the back side of his house here, he would have his shop where he would do all of his goldsmithing business. And as a goldsmith, you've got to have some gold or you can't do any goldsmithing. So he has to have some gold. If you're going to have gold, you want to have it secure, so you'd have it in a big sort of lockbox of some sort. And um, with uh, probably some sort of ironworks to keep it safe from burglars and that sort of stuff. But you can't be too sure, so he always made sure that he had some um, Rottweilers or Mastiff dogs just hanging around the place, you know, just in case anybody comes up, they make a big noise and... If you make any sudden movements, you could lose an arm or something. So you talk slowly and don't look them in the eye and just pretend like everything's fine, little poochie. Everything's fine. I just want to do some business with the goldsmith here. I want to buy a wedding ring or whatever it is. Um, so he would have these dogs there, but dogs would wander off, and so he put a fence, a fence around it. Of course, the fence, you want to put some barbed wire probably on top of the fence and have a gate here. And uh, he does want to leave every once in a while. You know, he can't stay home all the time. He wants to leave and have, you know, go to the church and, and go to the social functions and stuff. And so he, he decided he'd put a moat, a moat around the place. And then he'd have a drawbridge going over here. And then they'd get wet before they crawl up over. The, and it'd probably be a good idea to put some piranha in the moat around there as well. And so now if they can get through the piranha and up over the fence and past the Rottweilers and break in and have enough time to break into the vault by the time I get to my meeting and come back, then they got to be pretty good, but I've eliminated most of my risk that way. And so now he feels pr fairly secure with his assets being um, protected. There are other people in the community that have gold coins. And of course, they have a security issue too, but they don't have as much security as our friend the goldsmith. And so if the wind blows very hard, it could blow their door open. If somebody comes out and says, Sally, are you home? Sally, are you home, Sally? Hello, Sally? Sally, are you under your bed, Sally? <laughs> are you inside your sock drawer, Sally? Where are you? I'm just seeing if Sally's home, but if I happen to see some gold coins, I might think, I think I might need those more than Sally does. And so I think I might have to borrow them for a while because it's not very good security. Now, she's not stealing, of course. I'm going to pay it back. 
eventually, right? So to keep Sally's stuff from getting so stolen, people like Sally would go to the goldsmith and say, hey, um, Mr. Goldsmith, you've got a nice operation here, and it wouldn't cost you anything else in terms of marginal cost. W would you consider just taking my gold coins and storing them inside here because I don't have a very secure area to keep them, and you do, and I'd feel a whole lot better if you would keep my gold coins for me rather than me keep them. And the goldsmith says, uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see, I am not an accountant. I don't do accounting at all. I do goldsmith stuff. And if I take your gold coin, then I have a fiduciary responsibility to protect your stuff, and if I don't protect your stuff, then I'm liable. I don't want to, I don't get in the banking business. I don't get in the liability business. I, I, I make gold trinkets, gold necklaces, and gold rings, and all that. That's all I do. Yeah, but are you sure you wouldn't want to do it? Look, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you, I'll pay you a dozen eggs every other week. Oh, well, that that's pretty good, um, but uh, uh, no, I, I still got I still got to take a ledger. When you bring me the stuff in, I got to write down your name, probably the date, how much you put in, and then I I put it over here. I put it in over here with all the other gold coins in the lockbox, and then when you come back a month later, you say, you know, I gave you those ten coins. Now I want five of them back. Oh, okay, so I got to open up the ledger. Okay, you gave it to him for 10, so you have 10 on deposit, and now you want five of them back, so I'm going to give you five back on this date, and now I'm going to owe you five more. You're still going to bring me a dozen eggs every two weeks? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, and now he's keeping books, and now he's responsible for keeping the books straight and not ripping anybody off. And, uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want to do accounting. I'm no good at accounting. I don't debits from credits. I don't. I don't I, ledgers. I, I, I can't write very well. Don't want to do that. I don't want to do business in opium. I don't want to do business in opium. That's not drugs. I don't want to do business in other people's money. No, you know, I don't want to be responsible for other people's money. I don't want to do it. I, 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 I'd have enough risk right here without me dealing with the public and you guys coming all the time. Besides, you might come at 11 o'clock at night and one of your gold coins and stuff, and I have to get out of bed or something. I don't want to do any of that. Well, uh, tell you what, though. If you want to... Um, now, how's it... How, let me, let me think how this next step goes here. Losing my train of thought. Uh, so they don't do that. Because he doesn't want to deal in opium. But somebody in the community knows that somebody else is looking for a team of white horses. And there's some traders coming through from Arabia or whatever. And they got a beautiful team of white horses. And I know that guy over there will pay big money for those horses big money and this guy over here he's coming and he doesn't know that and he's willing to sell them cheap all i need is i need a couple gold coins to buy those horses and i can take them over here and i can double my money in six hours six to eight hours i can double my money that's a pretty good rate of return right i just need some money to do the deal for a day i want to loan some borrow some money for a day i borrow the money so i go to i go here and i say um Mr. Goldsmith, um, there's this deal coming over. Um, so and so wants to buy horses. I know he does, and these people want to sell horses. I know they do. They want they won't sell cheap. And he's willing to buy a lot of money. And if I, if I only had the money to do the deal, I could I could double my money. Can I borrow some of your money? Well, no, you can't. You see, because what happened is that I finally said, okay, I'll let you put money in my vault. In my vault, that's your money, in my vault, as long as I don't have to keep any books. I don't do books. So when you bring your money to me, one gold coin, I take a piece of leather like this, and I say, I owe you one gold, we'll call it bazant, 
and I put a number on it there, and you take that piece of leather and you can hide it whatever you wherever you want to hide it. But you better keep if, if you don't bring me that ticket, that IOU, I don't know you anything because I don't keep books. So if you bring me this leather ticket, then I'll take that leather ticket and I'll give you your gold coin back. But no ticky, no washi. Right? Just like the laundromats. No ticky, no washi. So this guy comes and says, okay, I, I want to borrow some of your gold coins to do this deal. No, I'm not going to loan you any of anybody. I need all mine. I'm not going to loan you any of anybody else's money because that's dealing in other people's money, and I don't, I've got a fiduciary responsibility not to do that. So I'm not going to give you anybody else's money, and I don't have enough to give you myself, but I tell you what I will do. You need three gold coins? I'll make up one, two, three of my leather IOUs and you can take those three IOUs and the guy was thinking oh that just might work because what happens is that they bring their gold coin to you and they take the leather back and when they want to get their gold coin back they can either take the leather back and get their gold coin or they can say well wait a minute no 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 if you're going to just go get the gold coin why don't you just give me the piece of leather, the leather IOU, and then I'll go get my gold coin whenever I want to get my gold coin. Right? Just save us both the trip. Because if you give it to me, you give me the gold coin, I'm just going to put it in there with, with the rest of them. So rather than trade with the gold coins themselves, they began to trade in representative money, the little IOUs that the goldsmith issues every time he gets a deposit of a gold coin, he hands them this leather IOU and says, you better keep that. If you bring me that back, I will pay your gold coin back because I don't keep any books. And the guy goes, oh yeah, they'd probably know that. And they know you, and this has been going on for quite a while. So here, can I borrow three of these IOU one gold coin notes? Hmm. Hold that thought. When I created this note down here for Ricky, I owe Ricky $600 payable in one week. Was that legal? Yes. Anything unlawful about that? No. And did I really create money? Yeah. So if I put down $600, is there any law that says I couldn't make it $6,000? Is there any law that says I couldn't pay him $60,000? $600,000? Any law that says I can't do that? No, I can, I can make these things as big. Cause my, it's my note. I created those. It's my note. Okay? So can the goldsmith make as many of his own IOUs as he wants? Yeah. Yeah. So he hands this guy the three IOUs. Now you've got to pay me back half your profits. <laughs> and you owe me three, three back. Anyway, okay. So he hands it to them, does the deal, buys the horses, sells it to them, comes back and gets six of these gold leather IOUs back, pays them back, makes a profit 100%, and they split the money and everything's fine. Everything's cool. Now, that transaction is the birth of what we call fractional reserve banking. That transaction of creating IOUs, creating representative money, and trading that representative money, expanding the money supply by doing that, is called fractional reserve banking. It happens so quick and so easily that you probably didn't catch the tremendous significance of that part of the story. So let me expand this story a little bit further. And talk about, well, that system's going on for a while. 
And as long as the people believe that there is a gold coin actually in the vault for every one of those IOUs, everybody's happy. Because I can get my gold coin any time I want to. But now what happens if the gold, our goldsmith, he has, let's say, um, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He has 10 gold coins of opium. Opium's not the drug. Opium is other people's money in the vault here. And they come back and they can get it anytime they want. And he decides that, that deal is pretty good. You know what? I think I'm going to create, with each one of these, he created 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. With each one of these gold coins, he created 10 IOUs. Every time they deposit, he handed them an IOU. So there's 10 IOUs in circulation for every gold coin in deposit. That is called 100% reserve banking because there is a gold coin in back of every single IOU. But our friend the banker says, hmm, our friend the goldsmith says, I, I think that I'm going to create ten more of those and go spend them. Because every time I hand one of those to somebody, people believe in their mind that there is a gold coin behind each one of those. The goldsmith knows that there's not because he just created twice as many notes as he has coins. Does the public know that? No. Are they going to treat this IOU as good as gold? Yeah. And is ever anybody going to be the wiser if he doesn't say anything? No. No, he won't. Now, this situation can go on indefinitely because the citizens have faith that the goldsmith is not a cheat. And let's say he's not. But the local citizens don't really care for his wife. They don't really like her very much. And they start rumors like, you know, Mrs. Goldsmith, she's got those really nice dresses. She's been taking trips to Paris and bringing back those nicer looking dresses. I wonder where she's getting all that money. Now, I know Mr. Goldsmith, boy, he's, he's as honest as the day is long. But that Mrs. Goldsmith, I don't, I don't trust her. You know what I think she's doing when he's snoozing away? I think she's going over to the other side of the house and she's snitching some of those gold coins and then she's taking them to Paris and that's how she's getting that nice wardrobe. That's, how, that's what she's doing, all right. How, how else could she get all those nice clothes? Yeah, I bet she is. I wouldn't put it past her, right? And once that rumor starts to spread around, pretty soon somebody says, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, I think it might be time for me to maybe take some of my gold coins back. That Mrs. Goldsmith, she might have sticky fingers, so I think I'm going to take some of my gold coins back. They're on the way walking to the goldsmith's place to get a gold, and somebody's like, hey, where are you going? I'm going to the goldsmith's place. Why? I'm going to get a couple of my coins. What for? You going to go buy something? Well, no. Well, what do you need to go coins? You, you still have your receipts? Yeah. So what do you need to go coins for? You got the receipts. They're good as gold. What do you want to carry the gold around for when you can hide the receipts a whole lot easier than the gold? Uh, I just thought I would want to get, <laughs> you heard that rumor about Mrs. Goldsmith, didn't you? <laughs> I don't believe it's true. I really don't, but, you know, sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry, so I'll, I'll go with you and get some of my coins out, too. So now two of them are walking down the road. Where are you guys going? Oh, we're going to the Goldsmith house. Why? Well, we just were talking, and we thought we'd like to pull out some of our gold coins. 
You you been hearing that rumor, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it, but I'll go with you just because I may, I might. And now you got three people, and then four people, then five people, and they're all walking to the goldsmith house in order to get some of their gold coins back because I don't know what, whether it's true or not. Doesn't make any difference. I just I just feel better. I would just sleep better at night with the rumors going around. It's probably not true, but I just sleep better if I did. And everybody's getting that idea. And then somebody about maybe in the back of the line of about 20 people are thinking to themselves, what if it's really true? I mean, not just paranoia, not just conspiracy theory or something, but what if it's really true? And she's been spending them like crazy, and he'd have enough to pay off the first 10 people, but if I'm way back in the line, he's going to run out. He doesn't even know. He might not even know they're gone. He's going to run out before he gets to me. So I think I'll walk just a little bit faster and be one of the top ten in line. And then pretty soon people in back go, oh, wait a minute. Everybody else is walking pretty fast, and I'm in the line, so I don't want to be the end of the line because, I don't know, maybe maybe they know something I don't know. So I think I'm going to walk faster too. And in order to walk faster, you've got to get ahead of the line. And pretty soon it's not a casual walk to the goldsmith's house. It is a run. And that's what we call a run on the bank. That people are afraid that they cannot get their gold coin back because they're afraid that there might not be enough there for everybody. The reason why is irrelevant. It could be a pure rumor. It could be a natural disaster. It could be a threat of war. It could be maybe an epidemic that people want to get their gold coins and then they want to go hide out someplace in the woods so they can be around other people or something. It could be for any reason or no reason. But if people lose faith, they're going to run to get their coins out. And if our goldsmith is practicing fractional reserve banking, the first people in line get their gold coins, and the last people in line are going to get nothing. Gone. Now, this goldsmith story, which is in your text, is the classic beginning story of how fractional reserve banking came into existence and it has been, this is, this is the way banking has been done for hundreds and hundreds of years. And this kind of banking, which is a mystery to most people, this kind of banking was inherited in our country. We just did it that way because that's the way it's always been done. Very few people know how fractional reserve banking actually works. And since that's the way it's always been done, then we just accepted it and did things the way that everybody else in the world was used to doing it in Western civilization. And we're going to pick up with this topic of fractional reserve banking in our next tutorial.